this. Yes. We are allowed to begin. Yes, I will share it. Can you please give me the possibility to share my presentation? Still there is not. Uh, I don't have the access to to share my presentation. As well the camera. Can you now can you share your presentation? No, not yet. Okay, please go. Well, Uh, once again, share your presentation, please. I don't have, uh, I don't have the, the access. I still don't have the access to share my, my presentation. Okay, uh, wait a minute, please. Share icon is disabled by uh, the, the the chairman. Yeah, we are working on. Yes. Try again? Yes. Yeah. So I will share my presentation. Okay, that's that's right. Is it clear? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Can I start? Can I start? Yeah. Please start. We start now. Time is running. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, all of the audience. Good morning. So, uh, I am Dr. Farhat Hisham from University of Batna. I will provide the main results of our work entitled "Optical and Electrical Properties." of annealed aluminium zinc oxide on on silver on aluminium zinc oxide multilayer deposited using RF sputtering technique. So the presentation outline is given as follows. First we start with an introduction describing the importance of zinc oxide and aluminium doped zinc oxide thin films for several applications including optoelectronics and uh, photovoltaic uh, systems. <clears throat> the second section is de dedicated to introduce the design, uh, the, 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 the proposed design and also the experimental facilities used for 
the elaboration and characterization of the developed multilayer structure. Thereafter, the results and discussion are given in the third section, and finally, we conclude with some remarks and future perspectives. So, aluminium zinc oxide, doped zinc oxide material has, a, has received a great deal of attention during the last few years. This is mainly due to its appropriate electrical and optical properties, which makes it highly suitable for several applications, including our home appliance, power electronics, such as circuit diodes and symphony transistors, also photovoltaic and sensing applications, uh, specifically UV photodetectors and buffer layers for solar cell applications. As a matter of fact, my, the microelectronic industry faces several issues such uh, related to microelectronic devices such as the low on state current self heating effects the huge power consumption material deposition problems and the high elaboration cost so to to develop high performance microelectronic systems we need to achieve high direct current capability of the devices, lower resistive losses and reduce power consumption, and the use also of low fabrication cost facilities and improve the breakdown characteristics. So in order to overcome these challenges, new low cost materials and design approaches are of great importance. So the aim of this work is divided into four main points. The first one is related to proposing new aluminium multilayer structure based on aluminium doped zinc oxide on silver on aluminium doped zinc oxide for optoelectronic applications. The second step is to elaborate the proposed structure and characterize also the electrical and the optical performances associated with the multilayer structure. And finally, analyzing the effect of thermal treatment on the optical and electrical properties associated with the, the, with, with the prepared aluminium zinc oxide on, uh, on silver on aluminium doped zinc oxide multilayer structure. So the proposed structure consists of introducing an ultra thin silver intermediate layer in the aluminium doped zinc oxide uh, thin film, which results in a multi-rise structure as shown in this figure. To do so, successive growth of aluminium doped zinc oxide sublayers and silver film is required. For this purpose, we have used RF splitting experimental facility to elaborate the the, the sublayers, uh, the aluminium doped zinc oxide sublayers, and the, the silver film. So, <clears throat> before starting, uh, we are cleaning up the substrate in the commercial detergent. Uh, we have used the glass substrate as shown in this figure, dying under a nitrogen jet process and thereafter the successive of sputin of aluminium zinc oxide and silver sublayers. And finally, annealing effects were induced at 500 degrees uh, to show the effect of the thermal treatment on the optical performances and the electrical properties of the structure. This table recapitulates the position parameters of the elaborated aluminium doped zinc oxide and silver subliers. For the characterization, the structure, the structure properties were analyzed by XRD technique, while the optical performances of the prepared structure with and without any effects were investigated by spectrophotometry. Uh, the associated optical and electronic parameters 
were accepted and the results are fully discussed. The electrical pro properties were investigated using Harmony's image. So this figure shows the XRD spectra associated with the prepared multi-layer structure with and without any effects. It can be seen from this figure that the, the, that the prepared multi-layer film shows an amorphous state without annealing process. Introducing an annealing uh, process, uh, low intensity diffraction peaks located uh, at uh, 3, 4, Point, uh, point 0.4 and 67 and 77 corresponding to uh, several planes of uh, aluminium doped zinc oxide material are achieved, highlighting the hexagonal ward site. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Yes of the aluminium zinc oxide crystal. Besides a sharp peak uh, of, of RG film is observed. This figure shows uh, the transparent spectra of the developed multilayer structures with and without any effects. Also, the top lots are given in the second figure. The as deposited film shows the guard the transparency due to the poor structural properties and the presence of agitin film behavior exhibiting low tra transparency within the visible range the annealed structure exhibits high transparency and the high band gap is achieved due to its enhanced structural characteristics so this table summarizes the electrical parameters of the de developed multi-layer structures with and without annealed effects compared to the azu conventional uh, aluminium zinc oxide thin film so it can be seen that the multilayer resistivity increases when annealing the structure this is mainly correlated with the increase of carrier concentration and oxygen vacancies with, with, with thermal treatment also annealing effects can also cause change regarding the home mobility and carrier concentration because of the increase of free carrier due to the presence of RG interlayer and high annealing temperature. For the concluding remarks, so in this work, a new multilayer structure based on introducing RG intermediate layer is investigated and, experiment, ex, and experimental facilities such as earth magneton splitting is used to elaborate the multilayer structure. The proposed thin film is prepared using a sequence based splitting process. Besides, an annealing process was uh, applied to show the effect of heat treatment on structural, optical, and electrical properties of the prepared multi-layer structure. Uh, XRD measurement showed the amorphous state of the fabricated multi-layer, while, while the use of annealing effects has led to improved structural properties. It was shown that the use of annealing effects can enhance the, 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 the multi-layer transparency and they reduce the, con the conductivity. These outstanding electrical and optical properties make th the prepared multi-layer frame suitable for the immersion of the electronic and photovoltaic applications. For the perspectives, this work can be extended by elaborating new UV photo detector based on annealed multi-layer structure, which is expected to offer higher sensitivity and solar applied property. Further investigating the capability of the prepared multi-layer structure as a buffer layer for photovoltaic applications seems also interesting, where new characterizations uh, using experimental facilities should be carried out. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Arati. I have a few questions for you. <laughs> First of all, can you go to slide four, please? Yes. Yes. We are not seeing your presentation.
Can you share, please? Yes. OK. And you can go to select for take. OK, that's what that's the way. My question is, um, what is the perspective uh, about high power consumptions for this stretch? Yes. The use of multilayer structure uh, by including a metallic, a thin film metallic layer in a UV, for example, a UV photodetector can can reduce the off current of the UV photodetector and thus uh, can deal with the power consumption aspect. Also, this can <coughs> can be used to to develop self-powered devices, uh, UV photodetector devices, which can also reduce the power consumption of the overall device. Thickness of the structure can be a problem for this uh, uh, application. Related yes. high power. Yes. The thickness, the thickness of the introduced AG thin film, uh, silver thin film can uh, can can modulate the electrical and optical behavior of the, the, the of the multilayer structure, where it is recommended to use uh, uh, an ultra thin film about uh, eight, eight to 10 nanometers. And uh, this thickness can introduce you an issue also in living temperature, I think. I didn't, uh, I, I didn't hear you. Can you please repeat yes. your question? Talking about thickness again. Yes. I think it may introduce an issue, a problem, of yes. uh, relating the temperature of annealing, isn't it? Yes. I mean, if, if you have uh, uh, thicknesses, greater thicknesses, you should modify your annealing temperature. Okay, is, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, I completely agree with you. And there is uh, something that you can do to lower temperature? Uh, using ARPS, Putin, uh, I don't uh, have an idea concerning this. It's because, Jessica, can you uh, put the next slide, uh, slide please? Slide yes. five. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Let me read a little, please. Uh, Oh, my question is in uh, one. You talk about resistivity increases when reading the test uh, structure in one of the representation. So resistivity increases are uh, uh, is an issue or is uh, what you expect to increase the resistivity? The increase of resistivity is an issue. There is a trade-off between the optical and electrical properties when uh, introducing uh, an, a, a silver uh, metallic thin film at the interface between uh, both uh, aluminium doped zinc oxide uh, thin films. Uh, so, so the increase of resistivity is related to the increase of oxygen vacancies and the carrier concentration when aniline effects is introduced. However, uh, the use of uh, Ag intermediate layer can uh, can present an improved resistivity uh, and uh, a lower resistivity as compared to the conventional aluminium zinc oxide thin film. Uh, also, increasing resistivity will affect your uh, out current. Yes, it affects the current. The current in a UV photo detector, for, for example, it affects the current. A well, lower diode well, current well, capability can be uh, is uh, can be at uh, uh, realized. Can you re return to slide four, please? Yes. Also, here you mention some material deposition problems. Can you talk about those problems? Yes. 
so, uh, there, there is various, various uh, problems uh, can be can be arisen when when depositing mater depositing materials conventional materials such as uh, uh, five materials and uh, other and others where high uh, high uh, high temperature high deposition temperature are required to achieve a good crystallinity of the films so in in this context new materials should be developed to uh, to to mitigate these deposition problems for instance uh, the aluminum doped zinc oxide uh, for the aluminum low low cost low cost and uh, <coughs> Room temperature conditions can be used for the elaboration of, 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 uh, of uh, good crystallinity material, high quality materials, thin fields. What's the, the range of temperatures using radio frequency? The deposited films are de uh, the the films are deposited at their own temperature conditions. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> well, thank you, Freddy. We we'll, let's prepare for the next talk, please. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much. Yes. We will start in a few minutes. <clears throat> we will start in a few minutes.
Abby, <coughs> can you start, please? Yes. Yeah. Can you please? Uh, can you see my presentation? Yes. Yes. <coughs> yes. Clear. Go on, please. Thank you, Mr. Chen. So, good morning. So, I will provide the main results of our work entitled Performance Assessment of a New Optimized Junctionless Silicon Tin MOSFET Transistor. So, the outlines are the presentation are given. given as follows. So first we start with an introduction describing the importance of uh, transistors for the development of cellular circuits. Secondly, we provide the device structure and the modeling methodology used to model the device uh, electrical behavior. And thereafter, the third section is dedicated to present our optimization approach using particle swarm optimization technique and the result and discussion are given in the fourth section and finally we conclude with some remarks and future works so this figure shows the evolution of the transistor during during the last century where uh, during the last uh, few years where several structures were proposed and fully investigated using several experimental facilities so we can see that <coughs> several structures based on tunneling field effect transistor, quantum wells, multiple gates, double gate and gate all around the structures and the introduction of HICA as a gate oxide can lead to enhanced properties and downscaling capabilities. Basically, downscaling the transistor and using thin film structures can lead to several undesired effects such as short channel effects, low switching properties, and also low drive current capability, which can limit the analog and RF performances of the device. So, we need for new modeling and optimization based frameworks to enhance the device performance. So the aim of this work is divided into four uh, essential points. So proposing new structure based on silicon tin MOSFET able to provide high analog and RF performances at 118 nanometer technology node, introducing PSO-based approach to select the appropriate design, also evaluating the performance of the optimized junctionless MOSFET structure at, at 118 nanometer technology node. This figure shows the device structure where we can see that the device consists of a junctionless structure with uniform highly doped channel silicon tin is considered uh, offering a high mobility. So also the device is considered with silicon substrate and silicon dioxide as a gate oxide layer. The device ge geometry is fixed at 118 nanometer technology node. So for the modeling methodology, the device is analytically modeled and uh, based on the diff diffusion transport mechanism. As Ferati, excuse me, you're getting, uh, excuse me, interruption. Can you turn on your camera, please? Camera, yes. Can you see me? Continue, please. 
Can you see me? We can see you. Continue. Thank you. So, so the analyzer device is modeled based on the diff diffusion transport mechanism, as we can notice in the first equation. So the charge along the channel are introduced and the associated flat band voltage are given by uh, flat band voltage and the mobile charge is uh, are given by the following equations. So a compact analytical expression for the Dane current is given by the following equations. The fourth equation is uh, <coughs> the, the result of the, the integration. While the current of the Dane source current can be given by the following equations, equation five. So the particle swarm optimization approach is used to optimize the device performance while keeping the the device geometry at 180 nanometers technology node to do so we can see the flow chart diagram of the particle swarm algorithm used to enhance the device performance so the second step consists of implementing the particle swarm optimization technique to identify the optimized structure. So the key, the key idea behind this technique mainly dwells on reproducing the social behavior of birds flocking. So the developed analytical model of the junctionless silicon tin MOSFET device is used to formulate the objective function while maintaining the standard 180 nanometer technology node. So the fitness function is given by this equation where the objective is to maximize the derived current capability and also the trans conductance and minimize the conductance of the transistor to achieve high switching performances. So the parameters to be optimized are the thickness of the silicon tin film the mole fraction of the tin in the suggested silicon tin channel and the oxide thickness also is opt optimized. So the doping concentration, the uniform doping concentration of the junctionless structure is also optimized. And the finally the work function of the gate of the gate is also optimized. After performing the PSO-based approach, we can see in this figure the variation of the, 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 the transfer characteristics associated with the conventional and the, and the optimized devices. We can see that the optimized device show enhanced driver current capability as compared to the conventional structure at, 118, uh, at 118 standard 118 technology node. So this is mainly attributed to the role of using particle swarm optimization technique in selecting the global optimal fitness function. Also, the use of silicon tin channel with optimized composition allows enhanced performances. To further assess the device performance, so this figure show, shows the variation of the transconductance as a function of the gate voltage for both conventional and optimized silicon tin junctionless MOSFET designs. So the optimized device shows enhanced transconductance as compared to the conventional structure over a large gate voltage window. So this enables achieving high RF performances. Also, it can be seen from this figure that the transconductance rapid, rapidly increases, indicating the enhanced commutation speed of the optimized device. So the optimized parameters of junctionless uh, tin silicon MOSFET are given, are summarized in this table. We can see that the gate work function is 4.9 electron volt while the doping uh, is reduced to 10, 17 
the thickness of the silicon is 20 nanometers. Uh, so it is clearly shown that the intrusive particle swarm optimization techniques technique has succeeded in determining the optimized parameters while maintaining 118 nanometers technology node. This makes the adapted approach effective for selecting the suitable designs, allowing the design of high performance transistors. So in this work, we proposed the new optimization framework to improve the performance of junctionless MOSFET based on silicon tin compound at standard 118 nanometer node based CMOS technology. So a create analytical model of the investigated silicon tin junctionless MOSFET is developed. So also the particle swarm optimization approach has allowed selecting the appropriate design parameters and tin concentration enabling superior drift current capability and the reduced output conductance. So we believe that the proposed modeling frameworks based on analytical modeling combined with particle swarm optimization metallistic technique can be efficient for designing high performance junctionless silicon tin MOSFET devices in cost effective 118 nanometer standard technology node. So as a perspective of this work, the present work can be extended by suggesting new design strategies such as dual material gate applying the present uh, the this optimization framework for the design of alternative uh, optoelectronic devices so thank you for your attention <coughs> thank you for uh, thanks a very interesting you. work uh, yes. once more you are showing how can genetic algorithms can be applied in this in this time for this design it's it's very interesting thank you well let me ask you some questions uh, yes first of all uh, didn't you evaluate the enough ratio of your transistor i didn't hear you can you please repeat your question didn't you evaluate the on off ratio of your transistor I didn't uh, uh, in the full paper. The full paper is submitted for publication. So I uh, I evaluated the on-off ratio and uh, the optimized device as a figure of merit. Uh, sure. So the device figure of merit uh, was uh, the swing factor and uh, the on-off uh, current ratio and improved characteristics were achieved. Okay. Can you tell me to? What uh, review, what journal did you send your work? Yes, uh, Superlatis and Microstructures. Oh. Okay, uh, I hope it will be accepted. It's very interesting. Thank you very much, Mr. Chen. Okay, uh, uh, um, another question. Um, can you go to slide 10, please? Yes. Uh, here you are presenting uh, the difference between the optimized device and the uh, conventional. But yes. I didn't yeah. got I didn't get which was the difference technologically. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. MOSFET and our optimized silicon injunction as MOSFET. It can be seen from this figure that improved driver current capability is achieved by a high current approaching uh, approaching uh, uh, 300, 300 microamperes is achieved as compared to the conventional one. Also, we can see that the in the saturation region the the the, prop the optimized device shows an improved uh, saturation as compared to the conventional structure, which is mainly due to the use of per particle swarm optimization for the minimization of the conductance, the optical output conductance. So the minimization of the output conductance can lead to better stability uh, the, the, of the transfer characteristic. Okay. 
And uh, does this device have uh, short channel effects? No, the, the, the short channel effects are not included in this device because of the use of 118 nanometers technology node. So the idea is to fix the geometry, uh, the geometry of the device at uh, the technology node of 118 nanometers, which shows excellent performances. And uh, this technology is the, uh, practically the, the way to use it technology uh, for the elaboration of uh, integrated circuits. So for this purpose, we have fixed the geometry at 118 nanometers, which where the short channel uh, effects are not pronounced. So uh, these effects can be expected for further technologies, smaller technologies? Yes, this uh, the short channel effects can, can be arisen when scaling down the transistor to lower channel lengths. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, once again, can you go to slide 12, please? 12, yes. <clears throat> there are you showing a gate work function? Yes. For the conventional uh, MOSFET is 5.1 electron volts and the yes. modified tension is 4.9. How can you modify this gate work function? So these, the, 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 this table summarizes the optimized, the optimized design of the junctionless thin silicon MOSFET, and also that of the conventional silicon MOSFET, which uses gold as uh, as uh, as a gate uh, as a gate uh, as a uh, as a gate. So the gold has the work function of 5.1 electron volt. So for this per for this season we have put 5.1 electron volt. However, the optimized design, for the optimized design, the, the selected metal work function is 4.9 electron volt, which can be realized using, using, using uh, polysilicon gate. I adopted so that polysilicon gate. So you can have three approaches, polysilicon, aluminum, and gold? Yes. Okay. Well, that it was. Thank you very much for your thank talk. you, Mr. Chen. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chen. No, uh, oh, okay. I will tell you that you can turn off your camera, but you have to leave that. Yes. Thank you. No, turn turn off your camera. Turn off. Buenos días. Sí, Buenos días. Buenos días. Buenos días. Bueno, ahorita te voy a hablar en español. Este, porque faltan este, 10 minutos para comenzar. No hay problema. ¿Puedo hacerlo en español? No. No. Ah. Ahorita, ahorita te, voy a... te hablo en español por, por las instrucciones y porque falta tiempo. Pero si ya una vez empezando va a ser en inglés, ¿ok? Ok. okay. No, okay. No, no, no. Ahorita empezamos. Yo te, yo te aviso. Gracias.
pregunta ni se puede compartir. Víctor Hugo. ¿Sí? ¿Me puedes ayudar compartiendo la presentación, por favor? Claro. Gracias. A, aún no, no podemos ver la presentación, Víctor Hugo. ¿No se ve? No se ve. No. Segundo. Listo, ya me aparece. Bien, gracias. Well, now it's time to begin, Victor. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, uh, you can start okay. with. Let me. Can you turn on your camera, please? Yes. So. Share your presentation. Okay, you can start, please. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm Victor Arzate. I am a PhD student in Simbesta, Guadalajara. And at the moment, I've just started an internship in Tyndall in Ireland. So I I will talk about my my work. Uh, that it's uh, that is the slew rate comparison of single end amplifiers, uh, the polyc gas code and the recycling polyc gas code. Uh, here is our agenda. We will start with an introduction. And I will talk about uh, uh, some uh, applications on the amplifiers. Then we will I, I will talk about the GM over IB methodology, just a little bit. And the next is I will talk about the folic gas code and the recycling folic gas code. And then the design, uh, the amplifiers design. And we have uh, the simulations and the results. And finally, we will have the conclusions. So uh, nowadays, the most in-demanding circuit in its design by itself is a transconductance amplifier, which is a basic building block in an analog circuit. Uh, it, and, it, and it is widely used in many electronic systems, such sample and hold circuits, ADCs, active filters, and instrumentation, among others. Uh, one of the main challenges in the design and amplifier is the design methodology. In most cases, manual analysis is uh, used to obtain analytical models based on the idea level one, which is the simplest one, but it doesn't consider all non-ideal effects of the technology. 
so uh, to eliminate those design limitations, one of the options uh, that it's in the state of the, of the art is the design, uh, the gem over ID methodology. So this, uh, uh, the GM over ID methodology is a design technique based on the performance curves uh, from the MOS transistor, uh, then MOS and the PMOS. Uh, and the most important curves are the transistor and fiancy GM over ID, this one, and the normalized current density, that is this. These two expressions are independent of the transistor size. So we only need to know the normalized current and the GM over ID ratio and the current of the transistor under design. In this, uh, in this work, we used uh, 130 nanometer CMOS technology and all the simulations were made in cadence. For example, here in, in this graph, uh, the curves are obtained considering, uh, considering a channel length equal 360 nanometers. The red one is for the PMOS, and the blue one is uh, for the NMOS. Uh, um, so we only need, with this methodology, we only need the following expressions, that it's the transistor current, that is this, and the transistor width. Uh, this graph, the, well, the, these curves, we can, uh, we can, well, this graph provides information of the transistor operations, like the weak region, moderate, and the strong ranges. Uh, and well, here in this table, uh, the range of these regions, uh, we can see uh, we can see the range of these uh, regions in this table. So uh, we have the folded cascode. It's a very simple, and there are uh, uh, this is a common folded cascode. Uh, it includes a differential pair with PMOS transistors here, and uh, cascode NMOS transistors MT to M uh, M6. The PMOS input is choice because it increases the bandwidth, generates lower thermal flicker noise, and also lower common mode input voltage than an NMOS input. Uh, the both the transconductance and the output impedance of the, of the amplifier are governed by the different transistors. So this with this can increase the gain. Uh, and another uh, kind of parameters. To analyze uh, this amplifier, we can use the small signal equivalent circuit that it's here. And we can get some important expressions like the transient function, this again, effective transconductance. And well, we have some expressions that uh, represents the terms of the transient function. And also we can get another uh, expressions like the gain bandwidth, gain bandwidth product, and the phase merging, and the slew rate. So with these parameters, uh, we can make a uh, design of the amplifier. And for example, while maintaining a constant output load value, like the load capacitance, an increase in the bias current IB increases the slew rate, but also increases the power consumption. So uh, the next amplifier is the recycling folded cascode, and it's like a variation of the folded cascode. Just we have a modification of the input transistors here that are split into we have M. 1A and M1B. And uh, here we have uh, we have the, the transistors M3A and M3B that are split into two. And we have another uh, transistors here that we have a cross connection. And uh, the other transistors 
are the same light in the polycascode. So uh, these currents, these mir uh, current mirrors, uh, uh, are uh, have a r relation of uh, k to one, and this relation uh, is just to maintain the same uh, uh, power consumption. So uh, if we made an analysis, we can get some expressions like the uh, transconduct efficiency, uh, effective transconductance, and the uh, output impedance. So uh, the current through the transistors M5 to M10 is a function of, of key in order to maintain equal power consumption and integration area. And we have that the slew rate expression uh, depends on the uh, of key. So we could uh, we have here an improvement in this uh, in the slew with the slew rate. And for example, just uh, for the amplifier design, we can uh, start with the polycast code. When, if we want to obtain the size of the M1, 2 transistor, we need uh, the transconductance, and we can use this expression to get the, transcond the transconductance. So if we use these design specifications uh, uh, for the design of these amplifiers, we can use it to get the values of the transconductance. And then with this expression of the slew rate, we can get uh, the bias current and the transistor current. So with this information, we can uh, make the GM over ID uh, uh, ratio and the normalized current. And with this information here, we can use this uh, these graphs, these curves of the PMOS and NMOS transistors, and we can get, uh, well, if we, we can, with this uh, expression, we can get the normalized, uh, the normalized current. And with this information, we can get the, uh, the width of the size of the transistor. And this pressure is replicated for all the transistors in the circuit. So we have uh, the dimensions of the, uh, uh, of the transistors of the amplifiers. We have uh, for the polycast code, we have the GM over AD ratio and the W over L ratio, and for the recycling polycast code. So this figure shows the open loop frequency response, and we have uh, that uh, we have some parameters here like the uh, game bandwidth product. Uh, for example, we have the of the folic code is the 91.34 uh, MHz. And for the recycling folic folic code, it's 175.78 MHz. And the gain is it's bigger in the recycling folic code. We have a bigger uh, Transconductance, uh, transconductance, and we are using the same power supply and the same uh, load capacitance. And one of the important parameters here is the the slew rate. So to measure the the slew rate, a small voltage step, uh, like 100 milli. Peak, peak to peak at one megahertz was applied, keeping the same load capacitor. And then to analyze the robustness of the amplifier against process, process variations, corners uh, based on simulation uh, allow us to evaluate its behavior. Like in this uh, 
figures, we can see the response of the folic gasket and for the recycling folic gasket. Uh, according to the typical corner, uh, that is this one, uh, for example, for the recycling folic, presents a better slew rate uh, over the folic gasket that we have uh, just 21 volts uh, over microsecond. And well, we can see that uh, the response of the recycling folic cascode, according to the process variations, uh, the, the, the response is more, uh, uh, ha have uh, less variations uh, like the folic cascode. So uh, the results suggest that the recycled folic gas could exhibit symmetric changes at uh, the corner process. We have a summary here in this table when we have the comparison between folic gas code and the recycled folic gas code. And we have just to compare an Miller uh, design. And we can see here that the uh, and the recycled folic cascode have a better uh, performance of their uh, slew rate. Even have a better performance for the gain bandwidth product, the DC gain. And, uh, for, and another important thing here is that, that the folic cascode, the recycled folic cascode, we have the same power consumption. And this is using the same uh, load capacitance. So as conclusions, uh, some expressions to evaluate amplifier behavior were uh, obtained. Uh, the transistor sizing was achieved using the GM override methodology. Uh, through simulations, the RFC, or the recycled folic cascode, showed superior performance. Uh, the slew rate measurements and robustness analysis against current process variations reveal that the uh, re recycling folic cascode is better than folic cascode. And this uh, position, the recycled folic cascode, as the preferred choice for high speed applications. So, this study enhances amplifier design understanding and provides practical insights, particularly for optimizing. And circuit performance in differential systems. We have some uh, reference, and that's that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Victor Hugo. Let me ask you some questions. Uh, can you go to slide six, please? Yes. Slide six. Uh, Did you say six? Sorry. Uh, yes, six. But uh, where are you showing uh, some effects of this of this technology? The technology that you are that you can use. Oh. You're mentioning. Uh, let me see the next. The next. This one. Oh no! What? Well, uh, keep it there. Uh, let me ask you. Uh, maybe you can uh, you get the uh, left. But okay. you are mentioned. You mentioned about non-ideal effects on technology. Yep. Uh, yes. That yes. does appear. Um, I don't know which slide. Did. So uh, my question is, uh, what? Uh, okay, there is. There is. It was five. Was five. Slide five. Mm -hmm. Does not consider all non-ideal effects of the technology used. What do you mean with non-ideal effects of the technology? The no ideal, okay. The no ideal effects yeah. is like the uh, short, uh, uh, short channel effects, like when we the, for example, when we use a technology that it's in nanometer, it's very small, like I don't know, twenty eight or um, forty five nanometers. Uh, this kind of uh, uh, technology, it's 
uh, are more susceptible to to have uh, this kind of effects that doesn't match with the uh, with the theories like the behaviors of level one when we use when we use the square law. It, so we we can design uh, with with a theoric uh, basis um, an ideal amplifier. So I mean that the no ideal effects that is that are the effects that are um, uh, how to say um, that that are in, in this kind of technology that are very small. And for example, for analog designs are very, have a lot of variations. So it's, uh, you have to be uh, so, uh, you have to be uh, very analytical to, to, to design this kind of, uh, uh, analog designs. Well, saying it in, it in other words, uh, short channel effects are not included. Yes. Okay. So, uh, furthermore, you should include those cases for your model. Yes, because uh, when we use the PDK on the simulator, like Evans, we can get some curves or some responses directly from the PDK, from the technology. So with with those in mind, we can use uh, different parameters. This is just uh, a way to do that, but there is a different uh, 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 different um, figure, uh, curves to to design. So we can use a lot of um, another parameters. And uh, for this, we uh, we can get uh, an um, a respon a specific response from the uh, technology. So with this, we can say that we uh, get the 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 non-ideal effects or the short channel uh, effects of the technology. Okay, Victor, tell me, Sauber, yeah, we have to finish. Thank you very much for your presentation. Good luck. Thank you.